Hello everyone. So if you remembered yesterday I created this uh, prototype model and it's, j it's just a prototype model so it doesn't have to be very high quality. It's just for a demonstration and the demonstration is now! Alright, so this is the demonstration object I created to use the demonstration model and it is a very basic kind of smocky shirt. Um, and what it is, is it is just a mesh. It has no shape keys attached to it. But you do notice that the shirt has a piece of body underneath it. Not the whole body, just a part of the body. And that's because this basic shape will allow me to map the body mesh to the shirt. So the shirt understands that this vertex should move with whichever one of these vert verts is closest, uh, and so on and so forth, and all of them will move in tandem. And so this body will compare to the base body in Unity, and then when you apply a shape key to the base body, it'll compare this to the baked version, that is the one with the shape key applied, and see how far these vert verts have moved, and then move these verts accordingly. Now, you can do this without the base body. You can actually go ahead and just use, just kind of manually put the base body in in runtime and just map it. Um, however, that produces some annoying uh, constrictions, some restraints that I'm not sure I agree with. For example, down here, I've got this part of the shirt overhanging the gut. And the way that I'm doing that is I've actually deleted all of the body verts for the part of the gut that comes in. So if I did have those verts, then these guys down here, they would map to the part of the gut that was further in, and you'd have a tucked in shirt. However, since that part of the gut doesn't exist, they map to the exterior of the gut, the farthest out point, and they will hang down. To show you that this isn't just all talk, here's Unity. So here in Unity, I've got uh, two dummies set up. So this guy, we're going to make him chunky. There you go. And this person, we are going to make uh, mannish. There you go. And I'm going to hit play. And so the one that we've made into a guy, you can see that the shirt has uh, contracted significantly around the bust. And the one that we've made fat, you can see that the shirt has gone and become fat in front. And as I said, it hangs down. Now this is just a test thing, so I don't have an interior surface. But if you did, you could be able to see it there. Uh, you can see that it also conforms perfectly well to all of the other areas of the body that we put fat on. And there's no pop through. Uh, I guess it's, there's a tiny bit of pop, pop through, but given that I made this in less than an hour, I'm not too concerned. Um, the pop through is strictly because of the way that Unity kind of arbitrarily carves these things into diamonds or into triangles, whatever. Now, the biggest strength of this approach is that the shirt inherits all of the blend keys indirectly by just measuring what's going on. So it doesn't have to know about any of them. And what that means is that we can go into this body mesh here, and we can actually just go ahead and add a new shape key. Let's call this one skinny. Skinny. Let's go ahead and call it skinny. There we are. Let's turn it up to one so that we can sculpt it. And then let's go ahead and sculpt ourselves a little bit of a skinny. No, no, not crease. That doesn't make any sense. A grab. Uh, some, something of a skinny character here. And I'm not being too um, precise about it because I don't really have the time to be doing it on camera. So I'm just generally bringing everything in uh, and making the character noticeably skinnier uh, all around. Oh, too much. although I'm not going to be using any verts that far down, so that part doesn't really matter. So then let's hit it up with a bit of a smooth brush just to take off some of that obnoxious edge I gave it. Actually, I probably could have just made the character skinny using nothing but a smooth brush. Well, whatever. So turn it back down before you save, because otherwise Unity will misunderstand. And now let's go back into Unity. And this guy that we made a uh, masculine, let's go ahead and make them a skinny guy as well. And then we hit play. And you can see that the shirt has adhered to this skinnier model. And we have a much more skinny sh character model for the shirt. Now, because I was so rough with the making model, with the skinniness of the, of the model, uh, the shirt has some crumpled parts to it. But to be honest, that's not so bad um, for something I literally did on screen in less than two minutes. So I just wanted to show you that this is the great strength of this approach. 
you can change your body's blend keys without having to change any blend keys in any of your content. That's right. So if you create a hundred shirts and then you decide that your fat characters need to have wider hips or whatever, you can just do it and all of your content will just inherit that. And of course there's pop through on these, but that's because I'm doing an overlay system. If we were doing a mesh replacement system where the chest mesh was its own mesh and then when the shirt mesh got applied it actually replaced the chest mesh, chest mesh there wouldn't be any pop through. All in all, I really do uh, like this approach and this prototype, which actually took me longer to record than create, um, works really well. So I am pleased as punch and I hope everyone else is too.